Hello and welcome to week four. This week we're going to talk about what's really meant by deep learning and how we use technology and instructional strategies that are both simple and easy but powerful um, in supporting this deep learning. With what we've just been through um, and how rapidly everything's changing in the world, this quote I thought captured it that it's not just technology, it's the way people are working and changing. The learning objectives this week um, are going to have you do one of the explore assignments, so writing a short paper, a forum discussion, and then putting those um, and applying those in our practice. So you'll explain how technology can be used to make your teaching and learning more efficient, effective, and engaging. In the discussion forum, we're going to analyze the role of technology in the support of deep learning. And our practice assignments will be both to identify and analyze the quality of digital tools and strategies that will support our learners' success. This week is really about looking at um, and explain the different types of knowledge that, as instructors, we must have and really integrate into our design to um, meet their 21st century learners' needs. So we'll be exploring um, TPAC, which is a kind of a mental framework, a technological, pedagogical content knowledge that really promote successful ed designs, all right? And as you do this, you'll also be looking at instructional tools that are really valuable to you and your specific learners, as well as strategies and models. Instructional models are really um, more sophisticated and develop structures for the learning experience. So they form the basis of building lesson plans, which is where we're headed next. And it's really related to that content area learning that um, is you've just really unpacked in your own unit designs. Technology and technological and electronic tools are there to support that academic learning. So these we're going to look for in terms of are they highly, um, are they high quality tools? And if so, what does that look like? So how do we analyze it for really effectiveness? And these are going to be, you know, are they, are they, um, efficient are they do they engage my learners the assignments this week we have your reflective discussion again those are always initially posted on Thursday and then responses are always due on Sunday as, as well as your other assignments this week we're going to look at what is the role of technology in the support of deep learning and that's, that's the discussion uh, question. But I wanted you in that just to consider that if our goal is to help all of our learners, not just the elite few, reach and demonstrate mastery as well as deep learning, then what needs to change? So in order to make deep learning possible, kind of on the larger scale for all of our learners, what kind of instructions will have to become part of our common practice. You also will be writing the short research paper, supporting it with references, and doing some research really specific to your own learners. So uh, this week we're asking you to explain how technology can be used to make your teaching, so whatever you're teaching for this instructional design, but even beyond that, and learning process more efficient, effective, and engaging for your specific learners. So we're really looking that you target, first of all, you're gonna to need to do the research, what does it mean by efficient, effective, and engaging, but then you'll be applying that to your specific learners. I ask you to go back and consider the learning profile that you did on your learners at the very beginning of this class as a layer now to dig deeper. And you've been going back to that a couple times already. We did that in your last assignment when you started considering how you would differentiate for these learners. So now we're looking at, well, how are you going to really intentionally use and select um, some technology strategies for your learners and using the process that um, is outlined in the readings. The practice assignment for this week 
and they, again, you'll be looking at TPAC as a way to systematically think through this process, and that I'll go into in a little bit. But one is to identify three or more high quality digital tools that you incorporate into your instructional design for this unit that support your learners by making the instruction more efficient, effective, and engaging. So you'll see that the research you did for your Explore paper is then now applied in a real practice manner, which is why I encourage you to do the Explore research first and then follow up with your practice. You will then analyze each of these tools that you selected for quality based on if they're powerful, dependable, flexible, practical, and enduring, and then provide examples of how you would use each tool in your instruction and or in your assessment. And then the last is to provide the information on the tool and a reference. So kind of a quick summary of what it is, how you eat, what it's for, and then with APA professional writing, reference it. So do consider using the TPEC again as the systematic thinking through. This can look a lot of ways as a template um, for your consideration, but communicate it as what makes sense to you. So before we, um, I'm gonna just kind of highlight some kind of key ideas and issues that might help you focus on the readings and resources this week. Um, so the difference between pedagogical thinking or knowledge and andragogical. Um, so pedagogical is what we talk about when we talk about children, and andragogical is when we're referring to adults. So it's the knowledge that involves really the all the understanding and edu that as educators we possess that leads to really intentional and effective instructional planning. So this includes knowledge related to the classroom management, the instructional time use, different theories of instruction, um, developmental theories, as well as just your instructional planning. Content knowledge refers to those key facts, concepts, theories, um, the skills, procedures within our given content area. So you unpacked this as you looked at um, an earlier assignment and also as you explored differentiation. And then the pulling it all together in the pedagogical or andragogical content knowledge is that intersection of these two types of knowledges that really inform our decision making about what's the appropriate way, method to teach our specific um, content in, in our area. TPAC, the technological pedagogical slash andragogical content knowledge um, involves really knowing when to use technology to support our teaching and learning process. So in a particular content area, how do we do that most effectively? We may develop um, our TPAC um, by first, you know, really starting off with some kind of understanding of just the instructional design process, right? The uh, understanding by design ADI model, what we've been working through. But then we, we look at um, developing our TPAC by kind of researching our own uses of technology. So as you look at the reading, how do teachers develop TPAC, that's kind of the big picture. It's like, how do we start with what we basically already understand or are developing an understanding in our own instructional design? And how do we use that and layer on um, those instructional um, intentional integration of technology. So that reading will really kind of help break down the different parts and intersections of that process. So it's a really, a, it's a kind of a model of thinking about using technology um, to help strengthen the deep learning of our content. Next is looking at our high quality instructional tools. So again, what I'm highlighting here really is parts that you'll be developing more into the assignments, but it's focusing in on what are the key parts of the reading. So in this one, it's looking at um, the use of instructional tools and from characteristics of high quality tools, both in the reading and resources. So first of all, 
instructional tools, they, they really should help make learning more efficient by saving time and energy um, or even money in the process. And our tools should make learning more effective for our learners, right? That there, it's deeper and um, more rewarding for, for both of us um, and more engaging for our learners' interests, whether it's psychomotor, cognitive, or affective. Again, use of instructional tools, um, article go, will go much deeper. High quality instructional tools, what does that even mean? And when you're asked to do this in your practice and, and in the Explore, we're looking at tools that are powerful, dependable, flexible, and enduring. Okay, so powerful tools, basically that it, it's that um, your students do can do their job better, right, or more effective um, by using this tool. So if they can accomplish the assignment without using the tool and it doesn't make it easier or, or, or um, more um, than not using it, it's kind of like, well, why bother? It can be a distraction. So this is really about making sure that you're, it's an add, added plus. Dependable is, and we've all been there, we, we want tools that work, right? With a few breaking parts, we need it to be reliable. <laughs> um, practical tools are ones that really aren't gonna waste that instructional time, but help accomplish that, that job the users would consider worth doing. Flexible um, tools are ones that can be used effectively by all types of learners across all subject areas. And then finally, the enduring tools persist in use and quality over time. The characteristics of high quality tools will break this down even further, but this will be a nice overview for you to use as you look at the reading and um, the, the videos and resources. Again, lots of short little ones, but um, it's hard to find, you know, everything's changing so rapidly. So hopefully we can share in our discussion forums some great ideas that come out of this. Always be sure to start with the overview for learning and technology, um, with the intro, the objectives, and the overview of the activities and due dates. I look forward to seeing your practice assignments this week, as well as the conversations around technology, and have a great week.